Hi, I'm Miss Lovelady and I teach third grade ELA at Sally Umbo Elementary School. Today we're going to continue on with our unit, The Stories Julian Tells, with Lesson 10 and we're going to be talking about text features. So today we're going to identify some text features and we're going to discuss how the text features add to your understanding. And we're going to be using the informational text, My Librarian is a Camel, which we've read um, about the country Australia and Thailand, and we learned about how they have different libraries. All right, this is an excerpt from the book. This is the very beginning of the book where the author is talking to us. And it says, maybe you have been taking your local library for granted, just as I did. Next time you borrow books, think about how lucky you are to be able to choose from all of those free books and to take home as many as you wish. So think about your library. So in our community, we have a big standalone building that's a library. You can drive to the library on some roads. You get out. You can check out as many books as you want, take care of them, go home and read them, and bring them back. So a lot of our books are very accessible to us. Or think about your school library. You can walk down to your school library, check out books, but other countries aren't so lucky sometimes. So that's what we're looking at here. So based on what you have learned about libraries around the world so far, why does the author tell you to think of how lucky you are to borrow books? Why are we lucky in our community to be able to borrow books? Let's take a look at that. So Americans have easy access to free books, just like I explained a second ago. The libraries are buildings. You know, we talked previously in Australia, the library is a big semi-truck with technology that comes to you. In Thailand, the books come to you on an elephant. So we, the books don't come to us in America. We're able to go to the buildings. And um, the libraries are located in mostly every community. So everybody has access to a library where we live or even multiple libraries. All right, so we are going to look at some text features. All right, so what are text features? And once I start talking about them, I think you're going to say, oh, I know what that is. So text features help readers find their way around the text. And like I said, you'll be able to identify. So let's look at some text features. So the first one we're going to look at is called a title. A title helps locate different categories throughout the text. So you are going to see a title, you know, at the front of the book. You might see some bigger titles to, to name the chapters. Okay, the next text feature we're going to look at is photos and illustrations. So they help show what something looks like or might have looked like. And the photos and illustrations always accompany the text. If we're talking about, you know, an elephant being a mobile library, you're going to see a photograph of an elephant because it makes sense. It goes together. All right, another text feature that we're going to look at is a caption. And this describes a picture or an image. And usually the caption is written underneath the photograph. So if this was a photograph, it would be written right underneath it. Another text feature that we have is a map. So the maps identify where a place is in the world. And this book does have a map, and we're going to take a look at it. Another text feature is a sidebar. Your sidebar gives additional information or explains a topic further. So it's going to be a lot of facts, usually. And we have bold print, words written in a bold or thick print. Um, the author puts these in bold print because they want those words to jump out at you. They're very important. And a heading divides a section of the text and tells what the section is about. So a heading is, uh, is like, a, I would describe it as a smaller title. Your title is going to be the big deal. Your heading is going to be smaller titles within the text. All right, so now that you have learned about different types of text features, we're going to be reading detectives. And let's look for these text features in our book, My Librarian is a Camel. So I'm going to pull up some of the pages from My Librarian is a Camel, and you, detectives, see if you can find some of these text features we learned about. All right, so this is the cover of our book. What text feature do you see? Very good. The first thing that I see is the title, My Librarian is a Camel. Very good. Also, we have a photograph here. It's a real-life photograph. All right, what do you see here? Very good. This is a table of contents. And some of these um, text features that we are going to talk about might not have been in the previous slides, and that's okay, because I bet a lot of you knew that that's a table of contents. So this helps us be organized. If I open an informational text, I might not need to know about Australia. I might need to go straight to 
the chapter about Kenya. So that's why the table of contents, contents is helpful. I can go straight to Kenya, look over here, and I can see what page to turn to. So this is very helpful text feature. All right, what text feature do you see here? Very good. This is a map. So this lets us know all the different countries and where they're located. And we can compare that to where we're located. So that's very cool and very, very helpful. Okay, can you identify any text features on this page? There's two that really, really jump out to me. All right, the first one I see, we're going to call this a heading. Because we already had the title at the beginning of the book, so this is the heading. These next few chapters is organized by learning about Australia. So this is a heading. And we have a photograph. So this is an actual photograph of the semi-truck and over there as well. So these help you understand. Sometimes you might not know what a semi-truck is. I don't call them a semi-truck. I call it an 18-wheeler. You know, so sometimes the pictures can clear that up for you. When I see semi-truck, I didn't really know what to think, but when I see the photograph, oh, I know what that is. So that's why that's very, very helpful. Okay, do you see any text features on this page? Very good. I see a sidebar. This area located over here is a sidebar, and it gives you additional information about ours was the country, okay? And then we also have a photograph right here, which is very helpful to us. All right, let's keep going, detectives. What do you see? What text features do you see on this page? Very good. We have a heading. We know that this section is going to be about what? Thailand. Very good. And we also have some photographs of the elephants there. And we have one more. Very good. If you found that one, proud of you. This is the caption. So it says, the elephant library is headed for remote villages in northern Thailand. So your caption tells about what is happening in these pictures. Very good. That one was kind of small. I'm glad you found that one. All right, what do we see on this page? What text feature can you identify? All right, we have a sidebar, some more information about Thailand. And we have a photograph. Very good. All right, so now we're going to take about, think about how these text features um, help us understand. All right, so here's our question. How did the text features in My Librarian is a Camel help you better understand how books are brought to children around the world. How do those text features help us? What if this book was just all words? We didn't have any titles or headings or pictures. It might be a little confusing and very difficult to read because it's just so much information. But these text features, how do they help us organize that? All right, so the text features in this informational text Help me understand by organizing the information. Now let's break it down and talk about each text feature. So the headings organize the book into sections by each country. So you could just go to that section to learn about that country. The photographs help me see that books are brought to children in many different ways. You could actually see how they're brought to them. The captions describe what's happening in the photographs. And the sidebars further describe the country and the people who live there. So that's how the text features help us understand as the reader. They're just very, very helpful tools. All right, we're going to switch gears right now, and we are going to do a writing revolution strategy called Basic Conjunctions. And this is one of my absolute favorites. So hopefully a lot of you uh, Monroe City kiddos are very familiar with writing revolution strategies. All right, so we're going to talk about because, but, and so. So the conjunction because tells why or explains. So we're going to do a movement for because. So put your hands right here and we and I want you to repeat after me. Go because. Very good. So we're explaining or telling something. The next conjunction we're looking at is but and that is a change of direction. It shows contrast. So I want you to put your hand right here and I want you to go but. One more time. But. Good. So when you use but in a sentence, it's a change of direction. You're changing what you're saying. And so that shows cause and effect. So we put our hands like this. We say, so this happened. So this happened. So what we're going to do is use the same sentence stem and finish the sentence using because. We're going to explain. Finish the sentence using but, change directions. 
finish the sentence using so and show a cause and effect. All right, so we're going to use the content from my librarian is a camel. So what I came up with is, here's your stem. Borrowing books in other countries can be difficult. So if you're comparing how you borrow books in other countries to how we borrow books in our community, it is very difficult. So let's explain why. Borrowing books in other countries can be difficult because, can you think of a reason that it's difficult in other countries? We're just going to finish our sentence. All right, so I put, borrowing books in other countries can be difficult because some countries do not have libraries in a building. That's how we have it. So we're going to continue our sentence. Because some countries do not have libraries. in a building. All right, so we need to check a few things. So let's first thing we're going to check for is content. Is our sentence correct? So let's read it. Borrowing books in other countries can be difficult because some countries do not have libraries in a building. So yes, our content is correct. The next thing we're going to check for is capitalization and punctuation. So right here, for some, this is continuing this sentence. So this S in some needs to be lowercase because it's the middle of a sentence, all right? And it is lowercase. And then we also need to have correct punctuation at the end, and I've put a period. All right, so we are good to go with that one. All right, now we're going to come up with another sentence using the conjunction but. So remember, but is a change of direction. So I might say, I like ice cream, but it gives me a stomach ache. See how that sentence didn't really go together? All right. Borrowing books in other countries can be difficult, but what do you see that's different about that? All right, now I'm going to share my sentence with you, and I'm specifically going to talk about Australia, okay? So, borrowing books in other countries can be difficult, but Australia makes it accessible by offering a mobile library. So, that's how they fix their problem. All right, so let's check our sentence. We gotta check content, capitalization, and punctuation. So let's read our sentence. Borrowing books in other countries can be difficult, but Australia makes it accessible by offering a mobile library. So yes, that content is correct. Now let's check our capitalization. If you noticed, I capitalized Australia right here. But I told you to make sure it's lowercase on the previous sentence. Well, that's because Australia is capitalized because it's a proper noun. And just because it's in the middle of the sentence, we still capitalize it. So this is correct. All right, and then it is a statement sentence, so we put a period at the end. Very good. Now, there are other options for these sentences. I'm just, showing, I'm just sharing with you what I picked. But there are definitely a lot of different options that you can put with these sentences. All right, now we're going to use the sentence stem and do the conjunction so. Borrowing books in other countries can be difficult, so cause and effect. What happens? See if you can come up with a sentence. Borrowing books in other countries can be difficult, so... All right, I'm going to share my sentence with you. I said, borrowing books in other countries can be difficult, so some countries have created solutions. So think about the different countries that we've looked at and what they did. All right. Borrowing books in other countries can be difficult. So, some countries have created various solutions. So my content is correct. Remember, Thailand, they bring their books by elephant. Australia, they get their books by trucks. So they have created various solutions. So content is correct. Now let's check our capitalization. So some, this S right here is lowercase because it's the middle of a sentence and I don't have any other proper nouns to capitalize. And our punctuation, we have a period at the end. Very good. So I hope you could see how you 
took this same sentence stem, borrowing books in other countries can be difficult, and made three different sentences just using three different conjunctions, because, but, and so. And like I said, those are, that's one of my favorite writing revolution strategies, because it's so cool how you can do that so easily. All right, so in this lesson, you learned more about your country of research by using text features. And you can identify text features in any book that you pick up. Mostly they're in informational text. So see if you can find, you know, some titles, some photographs, headings, bold print. All right, see y'all next time. Bye.